If you want to go properly fast on a motorcycle, you're going to need a four-cylinder engine. Yes, twins are characterful, triples are sonorous, and inline sixes balanced as can be. But there's no denying it. The fastest motorcycles on the planet have four-cylinder engines. Now, when you build a four-cylinder motorcycle, you can do it with an inline four or a V4. Other than engine layout, what's the difference between these two engines? Why does one sound like a screamer and the other sounds so sonorous and throaty? Are there advantages and disadvantages to inline four or V4s? And why are we seeing V4 starting to dominate racing and fewer and fewer inline fours on the street? Let's start by talking about the tried and true format, the inline four cylinder engine. Inline four cylinder motorcycles have been around since the 1970s. Think back to the Honda CB750 that revolutionized the whole world and pretty much started the inline four trend that we see up until today. If you think of the classic sport bike sound or to use a pejorative term, the crotch rocket sound, it's probably this one. Think of the classic Yamaha R6, the Kawasaki ZX6, maybe even a Suzuki Jixxer 600. There's more humble examples like a Suzuki Bandit, Yamaha FZ6, maybe even a Honda Hornet, a Concourse, and even the brand new Kawasaki ZX4 RR, all feature an inline four cylinder engine. As the name suggests, inline four cylinder engines have their cylinders placed in a row. It's a relatively inexpensive and cheap way to produce big power because it's pretty simple. You have one head, one set of cams, and one belt or chain driving those cams. It's inexpensive, reduces complexity, and makes the whole thing cheaper to service. The inline four cylinder engine is a very useful application where you need smooth and ample power on a motorcycle. A traditional inline four cylinder engine of the four stroke variety has a 180 degree firing order. That means that when two cylinders are at top dead center, two cylinders are at bottom dead center. And every 180 degree rotation of the crank, you have a power pulse on two cylinders. Some inline fours employ an uneven firing order to more mimic the characteristics of a V4, kind of like Yamaha's R1 cross-plane crank, but more on that later. This means that the inline four-cylinder engine produces nice even power pulses across the rear tire. Every 180 degrees, there's a nice even pulse across the whole rear tire and gives riders that smooth feeling the inline fours are so renowned for. This means that the engine is producing power pulses evenly on the rear tire as it goes down the road, giving the rider that smooth feeling that they love so much on inline fours. When you want a sporty street bike with ample power, ease of service, and good reliability, an inline four is pretty hard to beat. And we all love that sport bike screen. The V4 engine configuration has been around for quite some time on motorcycling, but has begun to pop up more and more in top the line racing bikes and exotic machinery. The V4 soundtrack is incredibly sonorous and throaty and will make most riders perk up when they hear one go down the road. exotic motorcycles like Ducati's Panigale V4S or perhaps Aprilia's RSV4 that have these just incredible soundtracks. But you also have some bikes of yesteryear like Honda's VFR 800 Interceptor or the RC30. V4s have a storied history in motorcycling and besides sounding amazing, they have some very clear advantages over an inline four engine. For starters, a V4 is just simply more compact than an inline four. It allows you to get a more aerodynamic motorcycle because the front of it is just simply small. You also have much more modularity with the V4 platform, and this isn't something I hear talked about a lot. But when you go V4, you can adjust the bore and stroke of the engine a whole lot more than you can on an inline four. On an inline four, when you start increasing the bore, the cylinders start to get too close together and you have to lengthen the whole engine. You have a lot more flexibility with the V4 in that regard. It's a lot easier to go over square on a V4, meaning that the bore is greater than the stroke, which means high revs. You can also change the angle of the V, which allows for many different characters. Aprilia's V4 is 65 degrees, whereas Ducati's is 90. And that's probably down to the fact that they want to change characteristics of the engine. You can also adjust 
the crank offset. You can put the two cylinders closer or further away from each other, or the two banks of cylinders rather, and that's gonna make a big difference for handling. Having this modularity over a V4 platform allows you to do a whole lot more in terms of engineering and actual design of the motorcycle. The most important aspect of a V4 engine is that it provides an uneven firing order by design. As we mentioned earlier, this is gonna vastly change the power pulses that are transmitted to the rear tire. That means that the rear tire is taking uneven amounts of power pulses on it while it goes down the road. This gives the rubber more time to sort of rest or regain grip while the engine is providing power to the rear wheel. This is one of the fundamental reasons why a V4 engine can produce more power, put more power down to the ground, and ultimately accelerate better than an inline four engine and it's why we're seeing them dominate in racing. So the V4 engine is sounding amazing. It's more modular, it's better, it's more powerful. It can do all these amazing things. So it sounds like the clear winner, right? Well, you can't have all advantages and no disadvantages. So let's talk a little bit about the cons of a V4 engine. For starters, a V4 engine is way more complicated to build and service. You have two sets of heads, two sets of cams, two chains driving the whole thing, and it's just gonna be really complicated. You also have some fundamental design problems in that the rear cylinders aren't pointing in the direction of the wind where the motorcycle is going, so it can be kind of hard to cool the rear cylinders on a V4 motorcycle, and it can lead to excess heat on the rider's sweet tush. The heat coming off this engine is, is incredible in a bad way. Like you genuinely can't believe it. V4 engines tend to be much longer than inline four engines, making chassis and geometry design a little bit tricky. Engineers can't put the engine in all the places they would want because it's just simply too long. So V4 engines are incredible and they sound really good too, but they're really complicated and they're really expensive. But there is a reason the V4 is absolutely dominating in MotoGP and in World Superbike right now. In in fact, in MotoGP, the only inline four machine still left on the grid is the Yamaha factory race bike. And even that bike uses an uneven firing order to mimic a V4. Because as we mentioned, those uneven firing orders are gonna lead to that uneven power pulse on the tire, giving the tire more time to breathe and retain grip. Also, can we just get a quick F in the chat for the Suzuki MotoGP bike? I'm seriously missing that bike so much. It was so awesome and it was not an uneven firing order bike. It was super cool. RIP. So for the average street rider, a V4 is crazy overkill and you're not even really reaping the benefits. But let's get nerdy and talk racing and why the V4 is so damn dominant. V4 engines are completely dominant in motorcycle racing in the modern era. In the 2023 MotoGP season, a V4 motorcycle won every single race with an inline four cylinder engine standing on the podium only three different times. And that was the factory Yamaha team headed by Fabio Quartararo, which one could say his talent definitely put that bike where it doesn't belong. And in World Superbike, where they use homologated versions of road motorcycles, V4s are also completely dominant. Ducati has the only V4 engine on the grid, actually. Everybody else is using an inline four-cylinder engine. And they won the championship in 2023 with Alvaro Bautista taking 27 victories out of a possible 36. And the second bike in the standings? Toprak Razgat Leoglu with the factory Yamaha team with the bike that has an uneven firing order. However, Toprak has moved to BMW this year with a traditional inline four cylinder engine. So we're gonna see how that's gonna pan out for him. And if you want an S1000 RR, I am giving one away over on yammynoob.co. The bike you've been seeing in this video is our featured giveaway bike for the moment. It is so sick. It's a 2021 with the M package, carbon wheels, heated grips, the premium, all the cool liveries. Go and check it out in the link in the description below. Become a member and start earning automatic entries. You can hang out with with me on Discord. It is a ton of fun to get involved here in the community and I highly recommend that you join so you get a chance to win that fantastic motorcycle. So what's causing this domination? Well, as we previously mentioned, these power pulses are incredibly important. They allow the rear tire extra time to grip and most people think that that's a huge advantage when it comes to racing. The inline four cylinder engines just simply don't have this, although the uneven firing order of the R1 can simulate it a little bit. The other elephant in the room is crankshaft length. Now, when I say crankshaft length, you might think that I'm making sexual innuendos, but it's way more important than you might realize in racing. The weight, shape, length, and overall design of the crankshaft is the most important thing when it comes to a racing motorcycle's handling. An inline four cylinder engine by design has a nice long crankshaft. That's gonna make it more stable. Think about it this way. 
When you're walking along a fence or a wall, is it easier to walk with your arms outstretched like this and you can balance yourself or having them really tight? Conversely, when a figure skater wants to spin around really quickly, do they put their arms out or do they tighten up so they can spin? Think of the crankshaft in those exact terms. It's called the moment of inertia. Having a longer crankshaft is gonna make your bike more stable at speeds, but it's gonna be more resistant to turning in. The other thing to consider is the position of this crankshaft. On an inline four cylinder engine, because of the engine design, Fundamentally, you have more options for where you're gonna put that crankshaft in relation to the swing arm pivot point and the overall chassis design. That's incredibly important when it comes to designing these motorcycles. So it stands to reason that a shorter crankshaft, i.e. in a V4 engine, is gonna be more twitchy and less stable. However, it can change directions much more quickly and can typically create more power and accelerate way harder. This is why you see riders riding a V4 engine taking totally different lines than riders riding an inline four cylinder engine at proper high level racing. V4 riders will typically get in and get out of a corner carving V shapes to maximize their rear grip and their acceleration out of corners. Whereas inline four riders will typically take long swoopy rides all through the corners to maximize their stability and corner speed. Both of these contribute to the different ways that riders have to ride these motorcycles to get the most out of them, but fundamentally, there's no best way to design a motorcycle engine. We've just seen through trial and error that a V4 seems to produce better results over an inline four. The other sad truth is that there's fewer and fewer inline four cylinder motorcycles being produced today than there were. Then why is that? Well. Euro 5 emissions definitely have a big part to play in it, but market demand and supply, along with production costs, also are influencing the demise of an inline four cylinder engine. Euro 5 says that manufacturers need to limit the unburned hydrocarbons in the exhaust of a motorcycle engine from 0.17 gram per kilometer to 0.10 gram per kilometer. They also wanna see carbon monoxide and nitrous oxides come down too. If you have more cylinders, you quite literally have more surface area for these unburnt hydrocarbons to escape out of the exhaust. Fortnite did a really nice explanation of this if you guys wanna go and check that out. So someone might say, well, yeah, why don't people just get more R&D on these awesome inline four cylinder engines and make them more efficient? Well, it's just not really worth it from a cost benefit perspective. People aren't really buying sport bikes like they used to, and so it doesn't really make sense for a manufacturer to invest a ton of time and effort and energy in making these bikes meet Euro 5 emissions. And people certainly aren't gonna buy more of them just because they become more efficient and in all honesty, they'll probably lose more power. Quite the contrary, people probably won't buy a sport bike if it's making less power than the previous year model. So this creates a bit of a chicken and an egg problem for manufacturers. The other issue is related to this, it's production costs and modularity of platforms. We've seen this a lot in the four-wheeled world, but it's starting to happen more and more in motorcycling. Car manufacturers have done partnerships between engine and chassis designs for years, coming up with concoctions like the MX-5 and the Fiats, or more infamously right now, the new Toyota Super which is just a BMW. Motorcycle manufacturers are getting wise to this, and while they're not quite sharing chassis and engines just yet, a la KTM and CF Moto, they are doing other things that help drive down costs. You see stuff like the Yamaha CP2 engine platform. They've taken that, turned it into an R7, an MT-07, and a Tenere 700. Aprilia has done the same with their RS660. They've turned it to an RS660, a Tuareg 660, and a Tuono 660, all sharing parts and components, and ultimately driving down their costs as manufacturers. And they're all coalescing around a 270 degree middleweight parallel twin motorcycle engine because it's just the most cost efficient thing to do for Euro 5 emissions and because it seems like a six to 800 cc parallel twin engine and a 270 degree crank is the crab of motorcycle engines, meaning that it's the final form of evolution for these things before the inevitable electrification comes for us all. It's very unlikely we'll see brand spanking new inline four cylinder motorcycle models coming out. And if they do, like the Kawasaki ZX4RR, it'll basically be just a bored and stroked out version of a tiny engine that they use in an Indonesian market that was totally neutered because of emissions. Famously, I bought a ZX4RR last year and it was only making 51 horsepower on the dyno when it was supposed to be making close to 70 something. That is a big reduction. I hope you learned something in today's video about inline four engines versus V4 engines. Leave me a comment down below if you have any other additional information that you think I might have missed that's pertinent to this conversation. Me personally, 
I find it hard to choose between inline fours or V4s. I think V4s sound amazing and they tend to work a little bit better on track for me and my riding style, but it's hard to deny the beautiful scream of an inline four engine like this BMW S1000 R here. Remember, this is a giveaway motorcycle. Head over to yamminoob.co, become a member and join our Discord and get automatic entries every single month to win motorcycles like this and more that we're doing in the future. You're not gonna wanna miss it. It's super cool and a great way to support what we do here on the show. Thank you so much for watching everybody. We will catch you in the next one. See you later. Keep watching, Gabby! No!